what in the hell makes a ragged out convertible Fox body worth five grand? Tell me what makes that worth five grand. There's no way that's worth five grand. Again, another morning traveling to the dealership. It's been a thousand miles, so we are taking it back and hopefully locate the source of the leak. Hopefully, they figure out there's something more wrong because I'm not sure if it's because there's lack of fluid in the transmission. It hasn't been acting right, so I noticed certain gear shifts are really hard and rough, second to third gear shifts. There is a tiny bit of slip. Hopefully they uh, end up figuring that out. Because at this point, I don't think it's just the leak. I think there's also maybe some internal damage. And I really hope that uh, they can determine that. Because I do not want them to sealing this transmission back up or fixing the leak and there's actually internal damage that needs to be uh, addressed so we'll see we'll get there get the get the rental and move on a better day i got something else i want to talk about too so here we are again with the fusion uh it's actually kind of funny they gave me the same car twice uh eh, it is what it is it's wheels for now not the wheels i want but it's the wheels i got so now that I got that out of the way, there is something I want to talk about. That something's kind of really been bugging me lately. And uh, I just want to go ahead and address that. All right, coming to you from inside the Cobra. Inside the Mustang. Inside probably one of the only, <laughs> most affordable Mustang on the market right now. I'm always on Facebook Marketplace, uh, Craigslist, eBay Motors, always looking for, even though I have no means for it, I'm always looking for what's out there. There are still so many cars that are on my bucket list, but the ones that I love looking up the most, um, mainly because I miss it, is the Fox Bodies. My first Mustang was a 1993 Notchback. So the, the Mustang Coupe Fox Body style. Last year, the Fox Body. That was the first car I had that kind of had that like caliber of higher end project car. Like the car before that I was driving around was my, um, my parents' uh, Camry. And yeah, the Camry is a cool car and you know, it, it, it has its place in, in the, uh, <laughs> the world. It wasn't the best performance car. It was, it actually, it was the V6 Camry. And for those who know, the V6 Camrys actually had some really, uh, the, the engines had a lot of potential. And back in the day, they actually made a factory supercharger kit for those um, from TRD. But you can hardly find those now. And for as much as they cost, you could just buy another car. So, Needless to say, I wasn't souping up the Camry anytime soon. I just had my fun with it. Did a couple intake mods and, and uh, some exhaust stuff. That car taught me to, to really appreciate um, Japanese cars and kind of the engineering, the modern engineering of a dual cam engine and whatnot. So I can't say it was a bad thing. It just wasn't a car that you say that you're proud to work on. But that all changed when I got the, the the Mustang, the Fox body. It was really kind of a rough car. You know, it had some damage and it wasn't much done to it. Mostly stock engine. Uh, you know, I think it had like a larger throttle body. It potentially had a very mild cam, probably like a E cam or something, some type of Ford Alphabet cam. It just, it wasn't much done to it. I mean, it was an AOD automatic stock rear end. You know, it had a fiberglass hood, had uh, well drag light wheels, so it, you know, it was kind of quick, you know, for a mostly stock 302, because um, the car probably barely weighed anything. It was fun. It was a fun car, it, and it grabbed a lot of attention. That car definitely has a following, and it, and it attracts a very 
specific group of people. Um, you know, the people who appreciate those. Otherwise, people would just think it's a rolling dumpster or something. Putting it up in the ne next to other cars, I wasn't mostly proud of, just because of the condition. But I tell you what, I still love that car. You know, I miss it till to this day, which is why I'm always on different websites looking at Fox bodies. I miss them. But with that said, it's hard to find a cheap Fox body anymore. Like what in the hell makes a ragged out convertible Fox body worth five grand? Tell me what makes that worth five grand. There's no way that's worth five grand. Back in 2013, it was the year I purchased my Fox body. Back in 2013, a clean box body coupe would run you between five and eight grand, depending on what was done to it. If it was like a highly modified car, you know, there was a couple on the market at the time. I remember, you know, like street strip cars, fully built 347s, big turbo whatnot. And there were bargains, man. There were bargain cars like they were selling them for like. 13 to 16 grand for for those cars so you know you you could get a lot of car for the money back then with the fox bodies but now for just a clean coupe you're paying above ten thousand. Now, i mean there there are lesser ones out there you know there there's some nice coupes you can find still for under 10 but they're still on the higher end of of the price range you can you you'll never find a clean coupe under seven grand you'll find them that need work you'll find them that have uh, some issues you will not find a ready-to-go clean car under seven if you do you better take it because you will never find it again and maybe in other areas it's different but here in my area in in the baltimore metro region the surrounding states the tri-state area you know i got virginia uh, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Delaware, um, even as goes far as like New York, New Jersey, and is down to the Carolinas. Um, and even over, if you do, even if you want to go over to Ohio, six hours west in Ohio, there's hardly any really like eye popping deals on Fox bodies anymore. It's just kind of sickening to see how much they've appreciated. And while that may be good for the seller, you can't hardly get your hands on a Fox body anymore without paying primo price for it. And it's just ridiculous. No one wanted a convertible. If you were a Fox body enthusiast, the most highly sought after, the car that brought in the most money was a coupe. A five liter coupe, a factory five liter coupe, and uh, you know, if you could find one, uh, a stick shift. That was the car that brought in the money. They were the hardest to find for a good price, That even then. You know, you could find a pretty nice LX uh, five liter hatchback for under five grand back in that time. Uh, now, you can barely find a nice hatchback for uh, you know, less than 10 grand. You know, you, usually you'll see them for six to, to eight on average. And then now you'll see, you know, bone stock factory cars hatchbacks, GTs, LXs, you'll see them, you know, they're lower mileage cars, albeit, but for, like for 10,000, 12,000, hell, I've even seen clean, well, it was an 88 GT at a dealership for 22,000. I'm like, you guys are smoking, man. You are smoking or you need to, I, I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. You're not, I would not pay that price. If I'm paying 20 grand for a Mustang, it sure in hell ain't gonna be a stock Fox body. Uh-uh. No, that's like, that's in Terminator territory. That's in uh, Celine and, and Rat. I mean, for 20 grand, you can almost pick up a, a S197 GT500 for 20 grand now. Why would you get an old Fox body? Why? You wouldn't. No one with their right mind would. But yet here they are, they're selling and these cars are up on the market for these prices. I think it's ridiculous. But back to what I was saying is that back in the day, no one wanted a convertible. That was especially a LX convertible. If you had an LX convertible, <laughs> forget about it. And if you had an LX convertible with the 2.3, you could find an immaculate. LX 2.3 convertible Mustang, you could find a pretty much perfect car for like two grand back in 2013. 
Uh, you know, I kid you not. And now that same car is hard to find under five grand. It's like, who wants to pay more than five? Like, I don't even want to pay five grand even for a clean two, three convertible. Well, what? They're like, yeah, a perfect car to uh, uh, turn into a race car or a perfect car for, for V8 swap. It's like, <laughs> you kidding me? Like for that money, you can, you're almost in V8 territory anyway. So yeah, the Fox body market is just ridiculous right now. And that's what I wanted to make this extension of the video about. I just cannot believe how crazy it's gotten. You know, these prices on some of these cars are ridiculous. I just don't know how people are getting away with it. Like, honestly, I'm really upset now because, you know, I'm not in a financial position to get a Fox body. And I think it's going to be really tough when I get to that point. I think it's going to be a real big challenge because the markets just, you know, appreciate it so much. I don't know how. I don't know why. Why would I pay 20 grand for, a, you know, 20, 30 year old? 80s Mustang. It's just, it's ridiculous, man. And I just hope that I don't get cheated out. I hope I will be able to find a Fox body when the time comes. And I know they're probably out there, you know, since I'm not in the right position now, it obviously doesn't affect me either way, but I'm just blown away by how the market is. So that is the end of the video here. I am done with my rant. I'm done with with all that, I got it out of my system. I feel better now. So if you sat through this whole video, congratulations, because I know that was kind of probably rough to, to sit and listen to. Um, but needless to say, I wanted to put it up anyways, because I feel like this is like a, a public service announcement. Someone needs to come out and say this. Um, so if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. Um, share it with your friends and family. If you like the content you're seeing, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, doing a lot more videos here coming up soon. I do appreciate the people who have subscribed and who are watching. This has been a dream come true for me, even though I'm just barely starting the channel. Just the fact that even 300 people have subscribed to my channel and I, you know, now I'm getting subscriber views on my videos. It's so cool. This has definitely been a dream, um, that I've had for a long time. So thank you so much. I'll be making more videos here shortly. I do appreciate everyone who's watched them so far and everyone who clicks on my videos. This is so cool. Thanks. I'll see you in the next video.